While the Lotus Elite helped to bring the company's name to the masses, it was a fragile and costly car to manufacture. Colin Chapman, the founder of Lotus, went back to the drawing board and designed a car with a clever folded steel backbone chassis to stiffen the shell while adding a minimum of extra weight. What they came up with is the Lotus Elan. With the addition of all-around independent wishbone suspension, the Elan handles beautifully. Production started in 1963 with many variations throughout the years. The very last of the successful Elan series rolled out of the factory in 1974. This car is a 1967 Elan, and it's a right-hand drive fixed head coupe, but it also has the very desirable Weber carbs and the knockoff wheels. But on top of all that, it also had a bunch of updates, so new chassis, uh, sorted through suspension, and an upgraded engine. Uh, so it really is set apart from the rest of the Elans on the road, and it was actually the last owner's personal race car. And I gotta say, it is a quick and nimble and really fun car. And back when this car was introduced, it was something so completely different than other race cars out there. So it was known as like a giant killer, basically because the cars of that time, like the AC Cobra and the 250 GTO, were these very powerful, but also very big, heavy cars, not to mention extremely expensive. Whereas this car is about 1,500 pounds, so it was just something completely different than what was already out there. And it's, I have driven uh, not a real 250 GTO, but replicas, which are built the, the same kind of way. They're still the Ferrari Colombo V12 engines and uh, the same kind of stuff. So they weigh and feel kind of the same as a real GTO. And they're an absolute blast. They're amazing cars, but they are big and heavy. So this car, because it's so much lighter, uh, it has great power to weight ratio. Even though it doesn't have the same horsepower, it still gets with the program real fast. So while this car may not be as swoopy and dramatic as a lot of other cars from the 60s, it has this kind of timeless elegance to it. Uh, it's just a very classy kind of look. I love the pop-up headlights, and they did things like they added a wooden dash on the interior, which looks very luxurious, but it also added structurally for the rigidity of the car. So it kind of has a, a two for one, you know, with the pretty dash. Uh, and these cars, they, we're known for chassis rot. So if you're buying a Lotus Elan, you definitely wanna look out for that because while these cars can be reliable, they also were neglected a lot of the times. So you wanna make sure that you're, you're well budgeted if there's issues with the car and you're well aware that that is something you really have to look out for. So, and the nice thing is these chassis are actually still produced, so you can order a new one if that's ever an issue. Like there are parts available for this car, which unlike a lot of the cars I deal with, the parts can be impossible to find, but you need to make sure that that's something you're aware of and you have budgeted when you purchase one of these. So about 1982, this car was purchased by Jim McNiff. And Jim was a fabricator for a lot of different West Coast racing series. Uh, and he worked with Dan Gurney for All American Racers. So he was an avid racer and this was his little project. And he, because these cars are known for having chassis rot issues throughout the years, he ordered a brand new chassis from England and had it installed. He had the suspension rebuilt. And then he took the car and sent it to Veloce Motors in Torrance, California. And Veloce Motors is a very well-known shop that does hot rotting on 
on twin cam engines like this one. So when the car was sent there, they rebuilt the engine and updated it. And this became Jim's little race car. I mean, he was, like I said, a big racer and took it to all different kinds of SCCA events. And he was even a racing instructor and used this car, uh, you know, for demonstration purposes. So it was his little toy. Sadly, he passed away and the car did sit for many years. Uh, and so when we got it in, it had some body flaws. So we had the car painted uh, and made sure it was running properly. And now we have it here. And honestly, it is just such a fun little car. These little Alans are a blast. I think these cars are really underrated. They are so much fun to drive. So this car, when we drove it around, uh, we did a little work to it because it had been sitting for so many years, but really not that much. Uh, there's definitely a lot more work we've had to do to like Ferraris and other cars we've gotten in that have been sitting for the same amount of time. All we had to do on this car was we did the paint because it just had some flaws and it just presents so much nicer with fresh paint. Uh, and we did the clutch. So the clutch on this is smooth, progressive, and it works great we did nothing to the gearbox and it shifts so smooth i i love how it works you know i i'm used to ferraris where when they're cold second gear synchro gets a little touchy and you gotta kind of plead with it a little but this one just kind of runs through the gears like i mean like it just wants to uh and when you're driving this car it does want to just go i mean i was trying to drive it a little slower for you know some of the video and it just wants to go fast and it sounds amazing when it does. I, I was very impressed with this car. I haven't dealt with a whole bunch of Lotuses before. It's not my specialty, uh, but I can definitely tell you that this car has made it onto my I really like it list. <laughs> so the and one of the nice things too, because I am used to the big heavy cars, uh, it just it's such a different kind of driving experience. It's so light and nimble. And when I was driving around, I did a couple corners and it just corners like it's on rails. I mean, it's a lot of fun. It is an absolute blast to drive. And it's funny because some people, Americans tend to be worried about right hand drive cars. think that this little car has just so much going for it. So not only could it be street legal and a race car, it was also owned by the same guy for or the same family for 40 years. 
and it's a 1967, so it was owned here in California, and as a 67, it, or you, it doesn't need to comply to California smog laws, it's exempt. So you can have it here in California and never have to worry about the dreaded EPA and DOT restrictions of other cars. And another little fun fact, not about this car, but about these Alans in general. So they actually Lotus sold kit cars of the Alan. Not this one, but basically in the UK, there was an assembly tax. So they sold some of their Alans as kit cars for buyers to be able to avoid that extra tax. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, enjoyed the amazing sounds that this little car makes. It, it really surprised me with how amazing it sounds. Uh, if you have liked this video, please subscribe and stay tuned because we got a lot more coming very soon.